mitochondria where you run a non-denaturing gel of the mitochondrial protein fraction. And I don't know how well you can, you can see it's a blue on blue signal, but there's a very uh, typical banding pattern here of the five complexes uh, of the respiratory chain. And we confirmed that they are uh, what we think they are by, uh, by Western line. Uh, so the first uh, piece of uh, preliminary data we have here is that this is the uh, untransfected control. <clears throat> and then two of our MTS tagged constructs, which in theory are going uh, to these, uh, these complexes. And uh, what, what we can say is at least expressing these exogenously is not disrupting these complexes. Uh, we get the same banding pattern in all three lanes. They're not fusing and they're not falling apart. And then over here on the left is an activity assay for complex five activity. And uh, you can see uh, it's an in-gel activity assay and you can see a nice uh, white uh, uh, band there. And uh, the same thing, we have nice strong activity in the untransfected cell and it's maintained in, uh, uh, in the uh, in ND1 ATP6 uh, cell line. So to, to summarize what uh, I would have just shown you, uh, we've made these 20 constructs. We've uh, been able to integrate them into, uh, into basically two complete sets of cell lines, and we're playing around with some, uh, some other cell lines as well, but we have uh, almost two complete sets at this point. And the foreskin fibroblasts uh, we're, we're uh, adding because they're a, uh, an entirely um, primary cell line uh, fibroblast that will uh, totally untransformed cell line that uh, should be a, a nice system to study these in. Um, we've confirmed uh, genomic integration in uh, these four genes and in, in all four uh, constructs of them. And for most of those, uh, we've uh, completed the uh, RNA analysis. And uh, complex one, complex five, activity is normal. Also, the 293 cells, uh, so far there's no, doesn't seem to be any toxicity. The cells aren't dying and they're, they're growing normally. Uh, what we're working on right now is that I want to be able to show you better than, you know, one color pictures of, uh, of uh, you know, for essence of our constructs. Of course, we need to co-localize them and, you know, make sure they're going to the mitochondria, have some very preliminary data on that, uh, but not nice enough to show you yet. Same for the, for the Western blotting. Expression levels at the protein level are, are, are pretty low in our hands and in our collaborators' hands, and, and so uh, it, it's not nice enough to show you yet, but uh, we're getting there. And then, of course, uh, next steps are, are doing the, the biochemistry, like I, I talked about earlier, and getting integration of the complexes. And then what we're really excited about, uh, to step back for a second, is th this assay, we don't just want to show that we're not messing it up by putting these in, but the really exciting thing will be to uh, find ways, uh, put it in and rescue uh, the activity in mutant cell lines. So we have uh, cell lines that we've gotten uh, that were derived from patients that uh, we're growing and we want to put in these, uh, we're working now on putting these genes in and uh, then we can uh, analyze those and then uh, perhaps doing the same thing in row zero lines which are cell lines that have no mitochondrial uh, DNA. So it's a clean system. So the, the logic that uh, I used uh, to, to pick which genes uh, to study wasn't random. Well, the first three were kind of random uh, we were using the same ones that our collaborator was using to repeat them. But uh, the other two that we added, uh, cytochrome B and ATP8, are, we're, we're doing it because when we put, if, if we find a way to, to rescue cytochrome B, then we can say that we've rescued, uh, for, the, you know, for the first time, the activity of an entire uh, complex of the respiratory chain by autophagy expression. And furthermore, the same thing uh, with the ATP6 and ATP8, we'll be able to say that uh, we can co-transfect multiple proteins and, and entirely rescue the activity of uh, one of these complexes. So remember that these 13 genes are not the only uh, proteins that make up these complexes. There's many proteins that are coded by the nucleus that are, are parts of each of these complexes. And it's just these that when they go missing, uh, the complex activity pretty much falls apart. So uh, our long-term goals express all 13 of these genes uh, individually and then uh, in groups and all at once. 
And of course, uh, uh, significantly longer term, uh, we want to move into mice. We can test the gene therapy in mice and perhaps make uh, transgenic mice. And the exciting thing about that is going to be that uh, you, can, you can come up with uh, crazy ideas, and I put down a couple here, of the type of things that we might be able to learn from mice like this, not just that it's safe enough to put into humans, but we can analyze uh, you know, the degree that uh, you know, mitochondrial aging contributes to organismal aging. And so you know, what, what is the phenotype of, of these mice going to be, and can we synthesize wacky uh, artificial organisms? Um, and of course, the ultimate goal is to do a gene therapy in people. So I want to thank uh, the people who uh, worked on this, uh, especially uh, Gantri Swaminathan. Uh, she uh, did her postdoc at uh, Stanford and came to us about six months ago, did uh, uh, the biochemistry and uh, immunofluorescence uh, work that I showed you, uh, as well as generating of cell lines. Uh, Daniel Kimball, who uh, you heard from, uh, it now works on the academic initiative, but uh, he was in the lab and he did all of the cloning, uh, made all of those constructs, which was fantastic. And then, of course, Sarah Fasal, like I said, uh, did most of the DNA and RNA work. And it's a great pleasure uh, to work for Aubrey de Grey. Uh, I, I like to say that uh, I get to take his crazy ideas and turn them into reality. And uh, our collaborators at the Buck Institute uh, and uh, Carl Dobrinsky and everyone else for the, who works at the Sun Foundation. And all Sun supporters, uh, whether you've volunteered or, or given us a dollar, uh, give us another dollar because uh, it supports our work. Thank you very much. Questions? Very, very nice talk. Um, uh, a question, maybe for clarification for me. So you're targeting proteins into the matrix mm -hmm. with a mitochondrial targeting leader, leader sequence. Yeah. And then that gets cleaved by the matrix peptidase. So now you have a protein in the matrix. Are you concerned that that won't be in the proper orientation or conformation to be inserted into the membrane? In other words, do you think there's a co-translational, transcriptional mechanism for those 13 genes? Or, or do you think that just getting into the matrix will be enough? I hope it'll be enough, uh, and, and we just have to confirm that. And um, I, I, you know, maybe it'll be an efficiency thing, and you know, some percentage, maybe that'll be sufficient. I mean, ultimately, uh, all we care about is rescue. But we're just going to have to uh, see biochemically what what fraction actually gets to the right place. All we know is it did work the first time people tried with HPAW and eight, and the mid eighties with some with the cell lines group. They got totally by the five years to rescue. Um, that's very interesting work. Um, I'm just thinking from the evolutionary uh, viewpoint, it's interesting that um, that the cell didn't attach these uh, sequences and do you do co-translational import by evolution. So in case, for example, it might be that um, uh, that uh, hydrophobic nature um, makes the import harder in the first place. Um, so there's been this other approach of um, inserting self-cleaving or self-splicing <coughs> endonuclease um, sequences into the actual protein with the only purpose to make it less hydrophobic. So in case you run into any difficulties with the import, um, even with this localization sequence, do you think it might be interesting to explore combining that? Uh, maybe. I mean, that's definitely one of the uh, alternative approaches uh, to allotopic expression, is, is finding ways to engineer the proteins to be less hydrophobic. Um, so, yeah. 